All right. Well, the dreaded day has finally arrived. I am reduced to talking about God. <laughs> uh, well, I fi I, well, I figured that uh, I've done the jo joke so much that I don't want to gallop it right into the ground, so... I thought of uh, a couple of different middle hymns, but decided that it was not fair to spring them on David last second, because I wasn't sure whether he knew them. Nah, that's fine, that's fine. One of them, of course, was The Rose. Right. Another one, which we have done once that I know of. Um, the other one, Grace Downs would approve of. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Praise him, <laughs> praise him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Grace has the faith of a child. And it is rock solid. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason we all love her so. From the first letter of John, chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and he who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. One of the other things that I thought of as a, as a possible hymn was really for the last verse. Do you know the love of God is greater far the love of God is greater far than pen or tongue can ever tell. Right. But we don't have it in the book. So. Right. But I want, you, I want you to listen to that last verse as soon as I find it. It might help if I looked in the right place for it, might it? There we go. Could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the soul, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. I will admit that I have had periodic rounds of insomnia since August. And those of you who have lost somebody particularly dear know the truth of the saying that grief is the price we pay for love. And sometimes you never know just how great the love is until you are struck with the grief. God isn't like that. I mean, we might feel that God is absent 
but he really isn't. Sometimes he's just waiting for us to, to get our tantrum out. Or to get over the crazy idea that we have come up with this week. Sometimes he's working on turning us from lumps of coal into diamonds. Sage, Ollie, do you know how, diam how diamonds are made from coal? Lots of heat and pressure. They get squeezed in the earth for thousands or millions of years. And at the end of the process, you have this shiny stone, which the jewelers have made more precious than just about anything else, even though historically diamonds were kind of low down on the, on the scale. God does not desert us. If you remember what I talked about on Easter, you know, you remember in extremely loud and incredibly close, God, like Sandra Bullock's character, goes in front of us and smooths the way. God knows what we need to do. I mean, Jesus himself said it. Your father knows what you have need of before you ask him. He also said, fear not, little flock. It is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Judith Dancy would say, we do not have a gotcha God. The Apostle Paul, and I wish Cousin Mary Bond were here, but she would love this, Put it, puts it this way. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have so we have that part down. When I was in York, I found that I had a lot of what some people call inner work to do. And what was very precious to me was a passage from Isaiah 50, the third, the so-called third servant song. You know, that's the one. The Lord, the Lord God, you know, gave me the ear of a disciple that I may hear a word, you know, a word when I'm weary. And I turned not backwards, I gave my back to the smiters, my cheeks to those who plucked out the hair. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. But why? Why does he say that? Why does he say that he had gone through all that? Because the Lord God helps me. He recognized that God, he has God at his back. God has his back. I wouldn't know, but people who have gotten into street fights say having somebody at your back to protect your most vulnerable point is very important. If, you'll, if you will forgive the metaphor. So what does that mean for us? In Genesis, it tells us 
that God created man in his own image, male or humankind, if you want to use the more modern phraseology. Male and female, he created them. He created them. And often, this is taken to mean that God gave us the moral dimension. What if it doesn't mean that at all? What if it, if what it really means is that God gave us the ability to love? There is a beautiful little, little carol that Lorena McKinnon took and made from some verses. It's Catholic in origin. Um, it's to the tune King's Fold. Um, if you know Irish folk songs, it's the star of the county down. You know, it starts off, the first good joy that Mary had, it was the joy of one. The first good joy that Mary had was to see her newborn son. To see her newborn son, good man, and blessed may he be. Sing, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, to all eternity. And there are like eight verses of this thing. So, so it begins to approach uh, Dianu. If, you, if you've ever been to a Passover Seder, Dianu tells you about 15 benevolent acts of God in 14 verses. And Dianu, Dianu in Hebrew means enough for us. It starts off having the force of, that would have been enough for us if God had only done this but not gone on to do that. Mm -hmm. By the time you have slogged through the entire thing, it has more of the feeling of enough already. <laughs> but if you, if you look at the verses of the seven rejoices of Mary is what it's called. You know, which are the seven, the Catholic seven joys of the Virgin. You know, see to see the newborn son was one. The next one, the joy of two, to make the lame to go. The joy of three, to make the blind to see. The joy of four is when he read the Bible or. But the joy of five is to make the dead alive. You know, there's not so much in it about Jesus is teaching it's about Jesus's acts of love and maybe that is how we are made in the image of God and we reflect the image of God the text from, that is attributed to Teresa of Avila, who was 16th century Spanish. She was a nun. She was a nun. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't appear in anything that has been published that she did right. But it's the one that starts, Christ has now no body on earth but you. No hands, no feet, no hands, no feet but yours, no eyes but yours, through which he looks out on compassion, in compassion on the world, no hands and feet which he go, uses to go around doing good. What kind of good can we be doing? <laughs>